Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there having a wonderful day like me and if not, manifest, plan and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you guys is surely coming to you all for sure. And if this is your first, second, third time or more to my YouTube channel, welcome. Happy to have you guys. Before you leave, definitely hit that subscribe button and that notification bell for your girl. And so when I drop content, you guys get that notification to come into Difference World and come and learn what's going on. Speaking of coming and learning, you guys, I'm an author, motivational speaker, and CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that tries to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which it educates, inspires, and entertains you guys all at once. So again, first, second, third time, or more, it don't matter. Just hit that subscribe button for your girl, yeah? So you guys, today is Wednesday. We we almost do it, you guys. It's hump day. And so you guys know on Wednesday, we drop our podcast interviews or in our collaborations um, that I'll be doing with dope uh, podcast hosts. And this one's no different. Uh, this is from um, my guy. We met over the Facebook uh, group uh, page for podcasters and we linked up uh, the, the amazing Mr. Marcus, the Marcus, excuse me, Brewster of the Seeking Knowledge podcast. We linked up and was able to do uh, a dope collaborative. You know, we were also, we shared something in common. We both were former foster kids that made it out of our situation and made something of our lives. And so I, I was happy to, you know, have the conversation with him and, you know, take a trip down memory lane, so to speak. Um, we talked a lot, a lot, uh, we didn't talk about, you know, overcoming foster care, um, letting go of the past, you know, keeping our mental health in check and so much more, you know, instead of me sitting here yip yapping and jaw jacking you guys, let's get on into it. Uh, check out my interview with the markets from Seeking Knowledge Podcast. And once we come back on, we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on in the difference for you. Here it is. Check it out. How we doing, YouTube family, man? How we doing? Anchor family, Facebook Live family, be yourself family. How we doing, man? You know, it's the host of Seeking Knowledge Podcast. It's the Marcus. And, man, I have this guest on. I met her in a podcast group, I believe. I believe I made a post. And she reached out to me like, man, when I say this young lady is gifted for her age. You know what, man? I'm just going to be quiet, man, because I can talk a lot. I'm just going to let different get the flow, man. Tell them a, tell them a little bit about yourself and, like, why you decided to title this beat the eyes all right well first of all what's up demarcus good morning to what's you up, and man? shout out to everybody out there watching your dope podcast happy to be Appreciate here it. Sharing my story uh shout out to everybody that's listening and watching make sure you guys hit that boy subscribe button for your girl and show them some Appreciate love it. And show me some love on my youtube channel as well as different oh. worldwide team come and learn but um okay. yeah just getting right into it uh about myself Yes, my name is Different, <laughs> spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T. I'm from Houston, Texas, holding it down for Texas, and i um, 32 years old. <clears throat> I guess getting right into it about myself. Um, you know, I had a pretty good childhood coming up until the time I was around 11. And then uh, me and my family, we ended up homeless on the streets for about three years. And there where we lived from literally pillow to post, you know, sleeping everywhere from you know, cars, parks, and, and bus stops, shelters, even at one point slept in a crack house. Um, and it wasn't until I was the age of 14 where, you know, I had a, a family member who was being spiteful and secretly placed me in foster care and didn't tell the rest of my family member where it was. And so um, uh, <clears throat> the first six months of me being there, you know, I tried to come home. However, you know, I found out through another foster kid that if I stayed and in the state of Texas, you know, they paid for your tuition to college. And so... Should a light bulb went off in my head and I, you know, just decided to use my street smarts to elevate my book smart because that was the only way I figured I was going to make it up out of there. And so I made that bold decision to, you know, spend the next four years of my life in foster care, being shuffled around in that system. And, you know, it was a blessing in the sky once I graduated. You know, I ended up going to, you know, college, shout out to the Bearcats, Sam Houston State University. <laughs> and, you know, even within that, that, that little four year stint, it was, you know, an eye opening experience. I got to do so many things that God set up for me, you know, to, to and play for me today. You know, I, I got the opportunity to study abroad and uh, I went to South Korea and uh, Kim Young University. And within that opportunity, I, you know, I tr end up traveling to eight other countries. And that's where my travel bug was planted. And, you know, 
10 years later, I've been to travel to, you know, just about 50 countries. I also had the opportunity to, you know, start my own student organization titled Pay It Forward, you know, and that's where my motivational speaking bug was planted. And so there we would talk about different, you know, well, we would go to different high schools and, and, and encourage high school kids to further their education and me sharing my story. You know, kids would come up to me afterwards and would say, well, wow, I'm going through the same thing. Well, I didn't know the state of Texas would pay it. I'm going to go to college now. So that's where my motivational speaking bug was planted. And um, even after, you know, I, I ended up coming out, you know, with a bachelor's degree in international business. You know, I have two minors in economics and business communication, as well as I have my master's degree in entrepreneurship. You know, a couple of years later, I got my real estate license. Last year, I got my insurance license. And so, you know, now I'm just doing the damn thing. You know, all graces and glory belongs and goes to God because he is the one who pulled me through it. But, um, you know, all those notches and accomplishments under my belt to market, it really didn't mean a damn thing, you know, if I was still having, you know, internal issues. And, you know, like I said, I come up from, well, and said it first, but I came up from a, a chaotic background. And for me, I was chaos, chaos was normal. I don't know if that makes sense, but chaos, when you sense. come up from that background, it's just normal to you. And so when I got placed in foster care, you know, it was a, 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 a a shift change from a paradigm shift, if you will. You know, mm, I was actually I really... in foster homes and, and, and actually black foster homes who were living in nice houses, went to school, you know, had degrees. And for me, it was just a complete new world. And, and in my mind, you know, I, I always taught myself, you know, nothing good ever lasts long. And so eventually it was going to come to an end. And so, you know, I just decided, you know, I'm going to be the captain of my own ship and decide where to sink it. And so, I would become self-sabotage and, you know, mess up every good little thing that came my way. And that's how it was for me, you know, through foster care, college, and on into my adulthood when I transitioned and to the point where it was affecting me career-wise. And so it even I had a, a incident that, you know, that, that made me have to look at myself and face the ugly tr truth. You know, I had a, a meeting with a well-connected person and, you know, letting these negative thoughts and demons in the back of my head get to me telling me, oh, you're not good enough. They're just taking pity on you because you were in foster care. You're too country. You're too ghetto. You talk too fast. And, you know, voices like that just got to me. And um, I ended up showing up late to the meeting on purpose and then left the sour taste in their mouth. And, you know, from then on, I had to face that ugly truth and look, in my, and look myself in the mirror and, and face the ugly truth that whatever I went through in my past, it was out of my control. It wasn't my fault. But as an adult, it's on me to go and fix that problem and that issue. And so it took me, you know, facing that ugly truth and saying, you know, bump that bullshit that people say black people don't do therapy. And, you know, I took my ass to therapy <laughs> to fix my issues, you know, or I work on my issues, if you will. Yeah. You know, nothing don't be fixed overnight. It's, it's a process. And so that's just what I've been doing. And, and I'm so glad, glad and grateful to God because out of it, you know, I started my own business. I wrote a book. And so I'm not only a motivational speaker now, I'm an author, small time business owner. And so that's what getting your mental health in check can do for you, you know. And so that's why with my business, Fairy Eye Entertainment LLC, we're a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services. So we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. But one of our main, main goals and objectives is pushing for mental health, wellness, and advocacy especially in the black community with, with everybody, uh, especially, especially, you know, with our people, you know, as we've been taught, you know, what goes on in this house stays in this house with most of us. Exactly. Have. And so it, and it doesn't, we don't realize how bad it affects us and shapes us until, you know, we, we projected it on others. And I never understood that same hurt people, hurt people until hurt I got up and made you realized that what I was doing was hurting others because of what I was going through and it wasn't their fault. And so, um, in, in doing yeah, that, that, yeah, that's, that's, and that's good too, man. And I applaud you for that. And, and, and anybody out there that's listening and, and watching, I wanted to sidetrack and just let you guys know that whatever you guys are going through, it is okay to not be, be okay, but don't ever, ever, ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help. Whatever that case may be, talking with a therapist, a family member, a friend, picking up a hobby, getting involved in your community, mending broken bridges, cutting people off, 
whatever it is that you have to do to keep your health, your mental health in check and not going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you, do that shit. Uh, I always give out mental health resources, so I'm going to do the same with you guys. If you know or if you need uh, these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with anybody that may need it. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255, or you can call or text 988 or text 741-741. For those that prefer to go online, you can visit mentalhealthishealth.us, or you can visit 988 lifeline.org and for those that are outside the u.s that be watching your voice podcast you guys can visit incounseling.com again in counseling is spelled e-n-c-o-u-n-s-e-l-i-n-g and although i am sharing these resources with you guys just remember it's on you to do your own homework and your own research to find what works best for you because at the end of the day you are the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters and so going off the deep end and taking anybody with you is not an option and it's not worth it. And remember that you guys, you are not alone and you too, you will get through this. So this too shall pass. Okay. And so uh, well, you don't get somber with it, but I definitely always want to make sure I share that because it can save somebody's life. I truly, truly believe that. And so uh, get, now getting back into it. No, nah, that's fine. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And so uh, being in therapy, you know, talking with a therapist, they encouraged me to, you know, get back into something I love and it keeps me focused. And, you know, when I was in foster care, you know, writing, you know, poetry and journaling, it got me through it. And so I started doing that. And during the pandemic, you know, we're stuck in the house, mind you, and I can't right. travel anymore. And so that adds into my depression. And, uh, you know, May 25th, 2020 happens, the day that George Ford he dies on, you know, live stream. Everybody watches this, you know, and um, he's from, I'm, we're both from Houston. He's from Third Ward. I'm from Fifth Ward. And so when they were marching and protesting in his name, of course, I wanted to be involved. I wanted my voice to be heard. However, when it all came down to it, the, I couldn't because, you know, I wanted my voice to be heard long after that protest was gone. I wanted it to be heard long after I'm gone. And so going home, talking, praying, meditating, and asking God what is it that I can do to, you know, have my voice being heard that's going to get catch people's attention. And that's also going to put me on the map. What can I do? And so, you know, talking, asking for the spirit of the sermon, and then, you know, he would show me little bitty pieces of here and there, you know, what asking these questions, what if, you know, this happened to you people, your people instead of ours. And I started writing the manuscript in June 2020, and by December 2020, it was done. I ran it by my lawyer. You know, she gave it high praises and then asked that question that rocked my world. She was like, what's the name of your business? And I was like, what, what, what? I kept telling her my the name of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. And she was like, no, I don't think you understand. You know, if you're going to sell a product to the public, you got to have a, you know, LLC. And so that's one thing about life, Marcus, when you think you know it all. And I never, ever claim to know it all, you know, but no matter how many, you know, degrees you have under your belt, you know, it's you still you know, a, a student of, of learning, you know, you're never too old to keep learning and keep growing. And so, you know, don't, don't think that because, you know, I got all these degrees under my belt. I know everything. I'm, I'm just that girl. You know, I, I am that girl, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't, yeah, you, you know, so may I, ask you something? <laughs> I ain't God. I ain't walking on water yet. So, or none, right. none no time soon. So well, it's all different. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Yes, sir. So it's, it's always all good. Nah, I'm loving your story. Like, man, you beat the odds. Like, you overcame a lot. I went through foster care, and I was yeah. eight years old to 18 when I went through foster care. And I'm going to be wow. ready to see the fucked up shit that went on in there. And I'm yeah, my you question is to you. Me, man. I waited four years. Shit. And I did. <laughs> Ten years in that hellhole. But man. my question is to you. Like, What's I know up? you went through foster care. You was homeless. Like, what was the sport that, what was the, um, what, what a night issue to just say, I'm fuck it, I'm finna just go all in, I'm finna beat the eyes no matter what I'm going against, I'm just finna say, well, shit, my situation, man. as an 11 year old girl on the streets, man, I had to fend for myself. If, if I was, how you say, overly developed, I had started developing at a young age, and you know, mm. men on these streets, they're monsters, they don't care how old you are, they will still approach you. Some of these men knew that I was underage and was still, you know, trying to holler at me, if you will. One time I was walking to school. Fucking perverts. Yeah. And, and uh, 
dude was following me, kept asking me questions, you need a ride, you need a ride, baby girl, and I just kept ignoring him. And um, one day, and I went, oh, no, I was, I was just, and I had like maybe like half a quarter mile to go, and I just, and it was a, a corner store that was open. And so what I did, I, I, I made a beeline to the corner store and went and bought me a little, little razor, whatever. And I uh, came out with it, and I just, you know, felt so much comfortable with it because if, if any guy was going to try to snatch me or try to take advantage of me, you know, it was going to have to put in some work. I wasn't, you know, even though I was a small woman or a small statue, um, I had to be tough, you know, coming up in the environment. People would always try to play with me and take advantage of me. And so, you know, I just had to get tough on them and, and, and tighten up. And so when that opportunity came for me to, you know, go into foster care, I, I know it's how crazy seeing it as an opportunity, but it was just escape from that chaotic environment that I came up from, you know, sleeping in crack houses. I had to sleep with one eye open, literally, and my hand under a pillow with a knife, you know, sleeping next to, you know, my family member. It, it's just, it was very, very hard. And that situation just, you know, and one night I was sleeping in the car, you know, with my mom in the park. And I just looked up to the sky and said, God, my life ain't going to be like this forever. And I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get out of this situation. And I'm only five one, you know. I'm not no model. I don't have no long legs, and so I can't, you know. I had to find, you know, my avenue and what worked it for me. And so, when you don't have any talents, you don't have any gimmicks. Education will be your fallback plan. So that was my education. And and when that opportunity came, like I said, a light bulb went off in my head, and I ran with it. And and, and it wasn't. Like it was the best, but it was way better than what I was with. <laughs> you know, I went through some some BS too, some bullshit too. You know, in foster care, being shoved around five different foster yeah. homes, you know, different schools, had to make up different personalities <laughs> and different you know lies and tell these people, you know, what my parents are. Why this my sister, but she don't look like me. You know, you go through that in foster care, and then you know when you come out, you don't really know who you are. Me, I didn't have anybody like that in my family. We were, you know, basically, I, they, they felt like I was the institutionalizer. I had came, uh, um, I was with the white folks. They, they would say, oh, you've been with the white folks. No, I was with black folks that was educated and, and, and had, you know, mm. substance. And I seen that and I knew that that's what I wanted. I didn't want to, you know, struggle anymore and live paycheck to paycheck. So that's why I decided to stay and let it grow on me and go to college. And that's what I did. And, you know, I say anybody out there that's in that situation or going through a similar thing, you pray on it, meditate, and, and let God lead you into the way that you're supposed to, even though at times it may not seem like, you know, it's the best or you don't understand why you're going through what you're going through. It, there's a reason for your season. And, you know, what don't break you will make you. So just let exactly. that simple think about that. And, and whatever you, you're going through, you shall get through it. It shall pass. Nothing lasts for long. And just you, you have to keep telling yourself that it's a mind game more than anything. It's, it's just all about yes. the mystery. And so yes, and even man. now, even even in this time, don't don't get it twisted. I'm still I wouldn't say struggling, but still going through it. Just like everybody else, i I'm just a work in progress. You know, right now where I'm at with my mental health, I won't say it's the best of the best, but you know, it, at times I do get down. Twenty twenty one was the hardest year of my my entire life. I lost five people in my family back to back to back, with my mother being the last person. She died in my arms the day after Christmas. And so, uh, you, know, you know what, I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to hear that because, like, I lost my mama, um, like, a few years ago, and I had to watch them pull the plug on her. Like, I literally was in the hospital, I had to watch them pull the plug. So, I feel your yeah. pain, but, man, you overcame a lot, man. But I tell people, when yeah. you go through pain like that, you turn, you use that as fuel, you use that as fuel to your fire. Mm -hmm. Like, turn your pain to your past and your past to your purpose. Yep. Perfect turn becomes a profit, <laughs> and so that's so, all yeah. it is. And 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 with that, it, it, I had to uh, 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 go ahead and get like a plan of action with grieving immediately, and I call it healthy grieving. And so that's just what I did with 2022. You know, stay with my therapist. You know, had to stay busy. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely at times, you know, grieved when I needed to, and I, I still am grieving. You know, and one thing way. about when you, when you decide to get your mental health in check. I want everybody to know that's listening, you know, therapy is not a quick fix, you know, one session sit in thing. You know, some people think, oh, I go to this session, I talk about this, that, and then I'll be okay. No, I want you guys to understand and realize that when you guys decide to 
get your mental health in check and keep it in check is going to be an ongoing lifetime commitment and that's something you're going to have to be serious about and stick with it it's just like when a person you know who's overweight decides to lose that weight and keep it off that's a lifetime commitment that they have to stick to and can't go back can't go back on and so when you're going into therapy you have to go into it open-minded open-hearted and understanding that this is not going to be a quick fix it's going to be a work in progress and a continuous pro progress that you'll have to do constantly because you're forever, as long as you're alive, you're going to have to go through trials and tribulations. So, that's, that's facts. Uh, and so once you start it, you can't stop it, basically. <laughs> and so um, okay. that's just where I'm at with it, as well as with my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Um, that was a book that I've written, like I said, when George Floyd happened, I'd asked all these questions, you know, what mm. if this, like, uh, for instance, um, well, I'll give you the synopsis of what my book is written by. It's written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. And uh, so be advised that it is sensitive content and it's intended for mature audiences. So for those who can't take this type of heat, I still encourage you guys to come on. No, I encourage you to come on in into the kitchen. Just get your fire blanket. <laughs> Shit, that's the point of it all is to have like this conversation it. that needs to be had. Yeah, man. I agree. You know, when it comes to systemic racism. Most people like to sweep it under the rug and pretend that it, it's not there. And so the way that I, I said my life. Yeah, me too. Just so I can make others happy, but not anymore. And so the way that I've set this book up is through with the graphic illustrations that are, I feel, it's going to be controversial. That's the point. That's why I have it titled in the, uh, my, my title, A Controversial Paradigm Shift. Um, but the way that I have it set up is four main paradigm shifts. We have historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. And for instance, with historical, uh, I ask the question right off the bat. The first question I ask is, what if in 1619, Africans started dealing in illegal slave trading, whereas they kidnapped millions of English men, women, and children and brought them on slave ships mm -hmm. to America. And in the illustrations, you'll see, you know, white slaves and shackles and chains, some jumping from the ship, some being whipped by black slave ship owners. And, you know, it's basically a race world reverse, which is asking the questions, what if this happened to your people instead of ours? What if this was still happening to your people instead of ours? then how would you feel? Would you be okay? Would it be justified? Would you turn a blind eye to it? And so um, that's the point of the book is just to get that conversation rolling. And the reason why I chose the controversial route is because I, I've noticed over time that controversy seems, people like controversy. It gets their attention much quicker than, you know, trying to do the of things, you know, going about it the right way. And so that con the, the controversial route is that, that attention grabber. And once I have your attention, come on to the table and listen to what I have to say. It's not just about pissing off white folks and rubbing people the wrong way or trying to start a race war. It's more so about coming together to that table and having these conversations and creating unity, taking accountability and acknowledgement. Exactly. Trying to come up with ways to create, because quite honestly, I'm, I'm tired of talking about systemic racism. You know, the, I want to talk about systemic change. And so when we have these conversations, it's my theory that when we have these conversations constantly, consistently, then over time, that's where we can see systemic change uh, start to take place. Uh, and I understand, I realize that, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen with just one person. It's going to take a, you know, a whole, basically the whole, the whole community, everybody coming together and doing this, you know, before the pandemic, I work with the Census uh, Bureau. And so, I've seen over time to where enough people complain about the issue and came together, they were able to bring forth change. And so that's how I know in my in this theory, this hypothesis, it can't be proven true. And so as far as my target audience, you know, I look to them to help me spread the word because this is a niche product. Uh, a lot of people aren't going to, you know, feel that, you know, this is, you know, the right thing to do and so or, or shy away from it. So, um, one thing I learned from 45 is that you go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. And so this man, you know, four years being in the office, Come on, man. he caused all kinds of, you know, chaotic, you know, BS bullshit, if you will. And, you know, towards the end, he still had people riding for him. He still had, you know, 75 million 
uh, adult Americans riding for this man. That's that's twenty five percent of the adult U.S. population still riding for him, no matter what. So that shows to me, no matter who you are, what you out there putting into the universe, or what you promoting to the public, it's gonna be it's people out there that condone what you're doing, and so they are gonna condone your bullshit, and so. Do you and go where you celebrate and not where you tolerate. And so that's just what I'm doing with this book. This is why you know, I come to you on my on your podcast talking with you about it. Because, you know, you seeking the knowledge. Here I am giving it to you guys. And so, I'm telling you. I, I, like and I said, so I'm you gl- celebrate and how we tolerate it. I'm glad you said that about the seeking knowledge. I'm looking at your LLC. It's a third eye entertainment. Like, what made, mm-hmm. how did that idea birth? Like, because when I think about the third eye, I think about the P9 gland. And, but what made you come up with that? Uh, with that? Well, LLC? okay, that I, I, I'm glad you asked about that because you know a lot of when you, if you don't ask, you, you won't know. But um, yes, yeah, so for me, I'm, I'm very big into you know chakra healing and meditation and praying yes. and learning about astral projection. And so um, third eye, it, it comes from you know your third eye chakra. For me, when you're spiritually in tune with your heart and your mind, you're able to do things and see things more clearly. And so uh, for I me, I, I pray, I meditate, I do chakra cleansing. You know, uh, I used to be afraid to talk about it. You know, coming up in the deep fried south, you know, mm-hmm. you mention anything about you know the spiritual world, astral projection, or you know anything in the, out of out of the, the source, people automatically think you know you into witchcraft or you Crazy. know. Stuff. And 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 I'm not here knocking nobody's belief, whatever they believe in, that's them. But you know, you black women in the south, we often get get that tag put on us up we into you know spiritual wickedness wickedness if we believe in that type of stuff and I don't for the record I, I believe in you know the light if you will and just you know pushing for you know goodness and so getting your chakras you know cleansed and unblocked it can help come you on now you know, yes and so with your third eye when it comes to that in, in order to you know see the divine or, or, or be given you know uh, uh, a clear sight of what it is that you're supposed to be doing in life you have to have your third eye cleared and so that's what you know i came up with third eye entertainment llc because when you know yeah, you got good, your heart good. in tune with your mind and you got it all together and all right you you can get your shit together and, and, and get go after what it is that you want in life and that's why i have my motto or my motto or mantra excuse me is manifest plan and prepare so what that means is whatever it is in life that you are feeling that you're destined for, believing that you you have, it's meant for you, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. The manifestation part comes from removing all the negative doubts in your minds and replacing it with, you know, positive affirmations and Amazing. speaking yeah. into existence and letting nobody else, you know, tell you different. The planning part comes from, you know, where you have to get it out on paper, write out the plan of action on how you're going to achieve your goals, write a second plan, you know, a backup plan, an exit strategy. You can't plan for the unknown, but you can expect that the unknown is coming and, 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 and understand that whatever that comes your way, this too shall pass. Now, as far as the preparation side of it goes, I mean, fixing yourself from the inside out, internal preparation. So that means getting your mental health in check getting your physical health in check, uh, getting your money right, cutting people off that mean you know well, mending those exactly. broken bridges. So whatever it is that you're manifesting and planning for, when it comes to you, you will be prepared for it. You will know how to handle it. You won't squander it. That's what I did You know, in my early 20s. I had a lot of good opportunities and good things coming my way, but I didn't know how to handle it. And I didn't believe that you know, it was too good to be true. So like I said, you know, I'm the captain of that ship, and so I would squander it. And in my 30s, now I'm taking a different approach to it. You know, I'm manifesting, I'm planning and preparing for the fitness that's about to come into my life. You know, when I arrive and make it big and, you know, this book hits and, and you know, I'm on these TV shows, I'll be the manifest and plan prepared for it, you know. And so manifest, plan, and prepare for what it is that you want in life and it will surely come to you. Man, I like I, I like the whole story behind the third eye entertainment, man, because that's, that's deep, man, like, you overcame a lot, man. You beat the eyes. You walked, you beat the eyes, man. And I'm glad that you you had decided to come on and share your story. So I just wanted to ask you this. So I guess being homeless and then foster, I'm going to say foster care. Because mm-hmm. I know my foster care experience, it was living hell. 
And that's what really made me get out here and try to want, wanted to better myself. Like, but even though I started hanging around the wrong crowd, and but I, I was in school though. I finished school. Don't let me say that. When I was foster and I was hanging in the streets, I did finish school. I just like said, "Fuck college, it went for me." But I'm, I'm a high school graduate, so I want to say to you, so with your foster family, you had like the support, the support you need to, to um, elevate. See, me, I didn't have the support. Not really. I mean, it was, well, I'll take that back. The, the last foster parent I had, she was the one helping me. I filling out the application. She she actually took me to the Saturdays at Sam. But like I said, <laughs> when it came down to it, I panicked. And I didn't really know if she was going to be there for me after I graduated because, you know, she was already expecting another foster kid to come in. And so what I did was I sabotaged it. You know, I started acting crazy. You know, I started doing, I, I even was smoking weed in the house and got kicked out. <laughs> Because you know, I didn't, I didn't know that. how to, I didn't know how to ask her if she was still gonna be there for me, or you know, and so I, I sabotaged it, and and we still we cool now. It wasn't until after I graduated from college, and I had called her and apologized to her, but you know, we we're one of the best friends of now. You know, she's been knowing me since I was seventeen years old, and um, so she's one of the only foster parents that I still contact. Everybody else, fuck them. <laughs> but uh, I'm there, be there, real, there, like, look, that was that was this life. That's crazy, because yeah. my foster mom, she don't fuck with me no more, because I published the, my first book called From the Hood to the Church, and I just mm-hmm. shared my story and put what I went through and how it is. Like, I ain't like I make shit up. It's the truth. Oh, and it's the truth. And you cut me off, because I spoke yeah. what I went through in foster care, because I want to help somebody else. Well, it'll mm-hmm. be like that, then. I'm not losing no sleep. I'm going to continue to strive, continue to push, but Amen, sometimes brother. You, the truth needs to be heard. Sometimes the truth needs right. to be heard, because your story... What you went through is not just for you, it's to help somebody else overcome what they going through. And a lot of people don't see it like this. So if she don't want to be in my life no more, then wish she haven't been in my life over the last maybe eight, nine years over some a, some, a book that I published, like I said, mm-hmm. fuck her and I'm going to keep pushing. For sure. And straight up. That, that, whatever they, what, listen, and I, I mean, not just to you, I'm telling you to the markets, but whatever you are going through and whatever you went through, it was out of your control. It wasn't your fault, but it's on you to fix, man. As an adult, don't expect right. anybody to, to him to heal your your heart, your broken heart. It's mm-hmm. on you to fix it. So if you expressing yourself and you getting it off your chest by any way that you can, you do that, man. And if don't nobody like it or they they got a problem with it, fuck them. I'm going through the same thing with some of my family members. You know, they mm-hmm. doing. I'm telling our business or I'm putting them in a bad light. No, I'm just sharing my truth and speaking my truth and allowing my truth to be heard so that it can save somebody else's life. Even, you know, now people emailing me, they sending me messages, man, I, young lady, I love your story. You, your uh, story is So don't worry about what you do. Like I said, go where you celebrate it and not where you tolerate it. And one thing about it, DeMarcus, I will say, I applaud you, man. If you could be doing, you know, you know our people, it's, it's yeah, not, I already, I get you. This society is not, you know, set up for us to, you know, thrive and make it. We have to, you know, scrape and scratch for everything that we want in life. And so I applaud you, man, for, for making it out of your situation and choosing to Thank do you. better. Now, I know nobody's perfect, and I don't want to put you on too high of a pedestal, but I just I want to give you a problem and let you know, man, you're a king, and you got a crown on your head, and you're rocking it all so well, and keep doing that shit. Don't worry about what I'm nobody else to say. And I'm gonna give you your flowers as well, cause you 32 years old. Like, I don't know no motherfucker that's 32 that's out there that, that got all the shit accomplished, but you got accomplished. And I know this not the end for you. And so I'm actually, mm-hmm. I know we came up on our 30 minutes. Like, what's next for you? And how can the people find you and know more about you? Like, this, you dope as a motherfucker. I'm just gonna say that. Keep out there, keep putting my 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 book out there, promoting my book. I'm more slow, more so on YouTube. I'm trying to uh, build sus- subscribers, and so everybody out there is listening and watching. You know, please go to my YouTube channel, Difference World YT. Come and learn, and hit the subscribe button for your girl, and come and learn about me. Uh, I'm more than just one option. I like to say I'm an eclectic woman. Um, I talk about on my YouTube channel. You'll see I have a schedule. I do motivation. I do social awareness. I drop my podcast interviews. I do pop culture reviews. I ask, I also you know share my travel adventures on Fridays. I just dropped my uh, adventures to Cairo. Uh, did one for Aruba. I got a whole bunch of them. So that's why you got to go to Difference World and hit the subscribe button. Come and learn about your girl. Also, you guys can go to my website differenceworld.net. And check out my other social media handles, my Instagram, my Twitter. I'm trying to learn TikTok so I get up on that mug, but I think TikTok <laughs> is for the youngest, if you will. Yeah. Like people that, that, I'm not a dancer like that, so, and I tried it when they first, you know, started it, but 
I, I got what was that song Renegade they had going on? By the time yeah. I got half the advance uh, moved, they moved on to another one. So I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna stick with my what I know. Right. So, um yeah, but but go to my website and you guys can book me for any type of motivational speaking events you'd like for me to be a part of. I'm free of charge as of now. You would just go to my website, differencewell.net, and book me. As well as you guys can get a copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift on my website and again remember that what if was written to encourage and inform thought provoking conversations about injustice in america and systemic racism and it's done through graphic and provocative illustrations so be advised that it's sensitive content it's intended for a mature audience and so if you can't take this type of heat get your fire breaking and still come on to the kitchen because yeah, <laughs> i like that yeah, get your fire you as well too <laughs> well, that too whatever you need um and then and as well as again just um going to my youtube channel and hitting that subscribe button i do appreciate all the love and support that i am getting i also want to take this time to you know give my mother a shout out in heaven Vern shell raynette shenever i love you so much and everything i do and everywhere i go i'm gonna represent for you and hold it down and make sure they know your name so i love you ma and i know you up there watching over your girl you the rest on and get you to sleep um and everybody else out there like I said, when it comes to that mental health, just remember to keep it in check and get it in check. Whatever you went through as a child, as an adult, it may have not been your fault. It may have been out of your control, but as an adult and you're the one that's left holding the bag, it's on you to go fix. Don't expect nobody to come back and mend that broken heart because they done moved on to their next victim. So it's on you to get that fixed. And so uh, I don't want to keep rambling on, man. So but just thank you again, uh, DeMarcus, for having me. Well, thank Hope you I get for a coming on. Hope I get a second invite to come back. Uh, I do appreciate it, man. And everybody Definitely. out there, just remember whatever it is in life that you believe in that you're destined for, you have to manifest, plant, and prepare for it. And it will surely come to you guys. Difference world. All right, guys. Welcome back. I hope you all enjoy listening to my audio interview I did with uh, DeMarcus of the Seek and Knowledge podcast. And try not to say that too fast. <laughs> uh, you guys, I had a dope time talking with him. As you guys see, we touched on topics of, you know, overcoming foster care and letting go of the past and, you know, getting a mental health in check, as well as, you know, talking about my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Um, and so, again, big shout out to him for having me on this podcast. Definitely show him some love. I dropped his YouTube channel below in the description. So after you're done watching and liking and subscribing to my YouTube channel, be sure to check out my boys, Demarcus, uh, of the Seeking Knowledge Podcast and show him some love, of course. And again, big shout out to him for having me. Uh, would be love, love to come back on and, and talk more with you about, you know, what's going on in today's society. And so big shout out to you again. Uh, and if you guys out there that liked our interview and like what we we're talking about, uh, be sure by showing me by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Definitely hit that subscribe button, you guys. I appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Please keep it coming and don't stop. As well as you guys can also check out all my other social media handles on my website, differenceworld.net. It has my Instagram, Twitter, etc. So go over to my website and be sure to check that out as well as uh, for anybody out there that's looking for motivational speakers uh, grassroots conversationalists uh, as well as those out there who do podcasts and would like for me to be a guest uh, of course I am free of charge as of now all you have to do is go to my website and book your girl again that's differenceworld.net uh, and you can also get a copy of my book that was one of the main topics we talked about on the podcast my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, is available on my website. Again, this book was written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So again, be advised that this is intended for a mature audience because it has sensitive content. And so, if you can't take the side of heat, still come on to the kitchen. Why? But that's the point of it all is to have these conversations that needs to be had. Just bring, get your little fire blanket and you'll be okay, you guys. The point of it all is just to push that envelope to have these conversations that are often swept under the rug and people turn a blind eye to or refuse to see it and acknowledge And So the way that I've done this is through the controversial route. I've noticed that, you know, co people love controversy, unfortunately. And so um, once I've gotten that attention with your, you know, the with the controversial grab, uh, listen up to what I have to say. It's more than just about pissing people off and 
rubbing a certain group the wrong way. Uh, it's, it's about unity, coming together as one, you know, talking about accountability, acknowledgement, healing from the past so that we can move forward and create systemic change. And so again, go get your copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, available on our website again, differenceworld.net, you guys. Thank you guys again for all the love and support that I am getting. Please keep it coming and don't stop. You know, I don't care if it's one or two people that's just liking my videos. I appreciate all two of y'all, <laughs> you know. Please keep it coming and don't stop. It's all it takes is just one person to believe in you. And so, two, wow. <laughs> you know, I can't believe it. And uh, I'm grateful for that, you know. And so, please keep it coming and don't stop. Also, moving on, what else we got going on in Difference World? Well, um, tomorrow is Thursday. And so, I kind of want to do a power review or a power prediction. I don't know how I want to set it up. I've been watching uh, other YouTube channels and seeing how they're doing and how they're catching, you know, attention of other people and, and getting people to subscribe to their channels. And so, I might do it. I might not. Maybe I'll do I actually went to go see last week, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So, who knows? I might do one of the other. That's why, again, hit that subscribe button so when I and that notification bell so when I drop the content, you guys come into different as well and you come and learn what's going on yeah uh, lastly or close to being last on our agenda is our mental health check you guys you know it's today's or excuse me not today but this is the month of May is uh, mental health awareness month and so all month long we definitely even before this month uh, we definitely push and advocate for mental health wellness awareness and so this was no different for anybody out there that may be going through any type of mental stress anguish, illness, whatever the case may be, depression, having suicidal thoughts, anxiety attacks, even dealing with bullying or relapse or any other child and tribulation that causes strife and mental anguish in your life. Please know and understand that it is okay to not be okay, but never, ever, ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you. We are talking with a therapist, a family member, a friend, picking up a hobby, uh, even if you need to get on medication, you know, mending broken bridges, cutting people off who mean you know well, do whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and not possibly go off the deep end and, and hopefully not take anybody with you. Uh, if you need or if you know anybody out there that may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255. Or you can call or text 988-NR. You can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us or you can visit 988lifeline.org. And for those that are outside of the U.S., I haven't forgotten about you guys, you guys can check out incounseling.com. Again, that is spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. And also, remember you guys, even though I am giving you these mental health resources, it is on you to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters, nobody else. And so, also before I close out mental health, I want you guys to remember, whatever trial and tribulation that you may be going through at this time in your life, this too shall pass, and so you will get through it. And so going off the deep end is not worth it, so therefore it's not an option, so don't do it. And so I'm going to close out with that and move on and bring it back to the positive energy and note of it all, you guys. Uh, again, I hope you enjoy listening and watching uh, my YouTube vlog today as well as my audio interview I did again uh, with Seeking Knowledge Podcast. Uh, shout out to uh, Demarcus again for having me. You guys definitely check out his YouTube channel after you guys like, share, comment, and subscribe to this YouTube channel, Difference World YouTube channel, of course. And so um, go ahead and do that for your, your girl. And then also remember, whatever it is in life that you're feeling you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And it will surely come to you. Difference World. Come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift 
It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America. Through graphic but provocative illustration, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.